NASCAR headed to Saudi Arabia in the future. Ryan Priest tested for RFK Racing at Homestead. Dale Jr. sold a ton of merch. And once again, NASCAR beats out Formula One in the TV ratings. <laughs> Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. After NASCAR took that Garage 56 car to the 24 Hours of Le Mans, we learned that Europeans absolutely love a big throaty V8, storming down the Malsan straightaway, screaming what the F is a kilometer, flanked by bald eagles, popping Budweiser's at the end of the race, wondering, why don't we have more of these over here? Well, it turns out the Saudi Arabians also are wondering, why don't we have these as well? And they might have them sooner uh, rather than later. Well, sometime in the near future. Because this past week at the new Gadia Speed Park that he's being built, what, 40 miles outside of Riyadh, uh, NASCAR is listed as one of the future participants or potential participants of this new circuit. The Gadia Speed Park um, is going to be the new home of Formula One in Saudi Arabia. Obviously, right now they race in Jeddah. Uh, they're going to be moving that once this is completed. This track, you probably have definitely seen photos of it. It's the Mario Kart track in real life. It has that cantilevered corner, which will be 20 stories off the ground, and I'm sure has uh, go-kart track owners in Pigeon Forge absolutely clamoring to have something like this built on their property. It's an interesting looking racetrack. I don't know if it's going to produce good racing or not, but NASCAR heading over to the Middle East isn't something that should be that surprising to people because while NASCAR said no comment on this photo that came out um, on Monday, they have said in the past, back in 2023, both Steve O'Donnell and Ben Kennedy said that the Middle East is one of the markets they are, they are looking to uh, expand into, explore, exploring an expansion into, along with Europe and South America, um, as well as Asia. So every market, essentially, uh, NASCAR is interested in. But it would be interesting to see them go over there. Listen, having Arabian Nights play over some cinematic NASCAR footage, especially with a setting sun, would slap, as the kids say. Uh, but NASCAR and the teams would most certainly get a bag. That's a bag of money for all the olds out there to go over and in, in participate in that race. Obviously, it'd probably be an exhibition race, definitely after the season, and would be with the chartered cars. Sorry, 2311 Racing Front Row Motorsport. Probably not going to make that trip over currently, at least. But the track won't be ready until 2028 at the earliest. And by that point, Connor Zilch would be like 22 years old, which makes me feel old and probably makes all of you feel old as well at the latest 2030 would be when this track would open but they have high expectations they want to move formula one there obviously f2 would follow porsche cup would go uh as well it's also going to host a stage of the dakar rally they would like to get um uh, world rally cross there and nascar was listed as one of those potential teams that or series that could be making um you know a trip over to this new racetrack and it looks cool it's gonna have a theme park a water park next to it throw in a nascar race as well and it's everything that atlanta wanted to be when they teased that they were gonna build uh you know a casino and a resort and everything at that racetrack but it could be interesting if it ever happens Three drivers stayed overnight on Sunday night in Miami down at Homestead to participate in a wet weather tire test on Monday um, at Homestead Miami Speedway. Those three drivers would be John Hunter Nemechek representing Toyota, Alex Bowman representing Chevrolet, and Ryan Priest representing Ford, which makes sense, right? He drives a Ford uh, currently in the Cup Series, the number 41 for Stuart Haas Racing, except the car that he drove in this test was not for Stuart Haas Racing. It was the number six car of Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. Go ahead and connect the dots there. You don't need the whole chart like Charlie Day had trying to figure out who Pepe Silva was. No, it's pretty simple. Ryan Priest is going to RFK Racing next year. We're all just waiting on a formal announcement. A third car likely with Kroger sponsorship once that's formally announced as well with a charter likely coming from Rick Ware Racing. Uh, that's where Ryan Priest is uh, going to end up at in 2025. I mean, NASCAR Cup Series director Brad Moran even said that, <laughs> that Ryan Priest would be in the 60 car next year. Now, is it going to be numbered the 60? That remains up in the air uh, they did tease that uh, it could be 59 based off of a tweet that rfk put out uh last week or the week before when they stopped it at 6 17 59 so it has some people speculate that 59 could be the number there as well but for ryan priest like that's a big time get as we said before rfk racing believes that ryan priest has not shown his full potential in the cup series yet i'm not 100 sure if i'm on board with that but he did just get a top 10 finish this past weekend at homestead at a time where those uh, shr cars have just not brought that much speed they did bring speed this weekend this past weekend rather uh to homestead which was nice to see especially as they you know their days as a company are dwindling and they're down to their final two races as Stuart haas racing as we know it in the cup series 
Uh, but the wet weather tire test that they did have on Monday at Homestead apparently went really well, according to uh, Brad Moran, who said that NASCAR and Goodyear were really happy with the feedback and what they saw in this test. Goodyear brought five different tires, including four different wet weather tire options for the drivers to trial throughout the day. All three drivers agreed on the same compound. They all said that that was the best tire out there. Ryan Priest did say that spray is pretty pretty bad in some situations. He said with a heavy spray, like within half a straightaway of the car in front of you, you just really couldn't see uh, anything. So not ideal there, but it was something that they wanted to test out. And if they were, you know, surprised or pleased with what they saw, maybe this is something we see in the future. Brad Moran did said that did say that he expects to see more use of wet weather tires in 2025. Obviously, they use them at North Wilkesboro this year. They started Richmond on them. They finished New Hampshire on them. So we've seen NASCAR, you know, start to play with them a little bit more on ovals, which is a good thing for sure. Now, if they're going to make their way to intermediates, that's where it's going to kind of be up in the air. Still fully expect to never see them at uh, Daytona, Talladega, and Atlanta. That would just be an absolute disaster waiting to happen. That'll never happen. But, you know, potentially starting, you know, maybe 30 minutes before they would have on a, uh, you know, an intermediate track could help get that full race in. So, yeah, I, I think it's definitely worth the test. I'm glad that they did it. They soaked the track down on Sunday night and then resprayed it on Monday morning uh, before those cars went out there to trial the these tires. Uh, they're never going to race in heavy rain on an oval. Uh, so yeah, I think that it was worth the test and I'm glad that they did it because for years people have clamored for it. And it's never been about the fact that like the cars can't handle it. It's more about the visibility uh, for the drivers. So uh, Ryan Priest going to RFK, which we pretty much knew was going to happen, still just waiting on that formal announcement. And hey, at least they trialed these tires and it sounds like they did a good job. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have become a gigantic fan of the Camber sunglasses over the last few weeks. Drivensunglasses.com. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Dale Jr. sold a ton of Budweiser number eight merchandise a little less than a week after announcing and putting all of their merchandise on sale. According to the Sports Business Journal, uh, Junior Motorsports has sold in the mid six figures in terms of total merch so far from that number eight uh, release, which is really, really big. I mean, Dale Sr. last year was what the eighth most selling driver in NASCAR Cup Series merch sales, and he's been dead for 23 years, 22 at that point. Uh, Dale Jr., bringing back the number eight is going to push him right up those charts in terms of drivers that are selling a ton, a ton of merch, whether it's a t-shirt, a hat, a die cast. I mean, it was a limited rollout, right? There was like four different t-shirts, two or three different sweatshirts, uh, you know, various die cast, including helmets as well. Uh, so there was definitely a, a good rollout there, but not like a plethora of products like some other drivers have. Uh, you know, at their disposal. And for them to turn in a mid six figure uh, return so far in a little under a week, talking about like five to six days. Uh, yeah, that's that's really impressive. The star power of Dale Jr. has not died out at all. Now, is that a bit of a problem? A little bit, just because you would like to have your current NASCAR Cup Series stars be able to move a lot of merch like that, be able to be that star figure, the guy that is going to move the needle. Unfortunately, a 50 year old retired driver is still that guy and he's not coming back to the Cup Series. So uh, the sport needs to knows it needs to work on creating, you know, a star out of their current NASCAR Cup Series drivers. The problem is there's not like a built in legion of fans. Chase Elliott could potentially be that driver, but he's not super personable. His personality, while I think actually is pretty good, is just never on display. And that's, you know, his own thing to do. He doesn't is not contracted to, you know, be a personal guy. He's contracted to drive a race car. Uh, so I'm not going to fault him for wanting to be private and things like that. But NASCAR is never going to have that next big star um, as long as Dale Jr. hangs around because people still whatever direction Dale moves is the direction that the masses move. Um, they refer to him as redneck Jesus for a reason. And it's because what he says goes most of the time. But he did move a ton of merch. It'll be interesting to see how that sort of picks up through the holiday. Uh, season and what it looks like when the final tally comes out for the 2024 driver merch totals. I will be interested to see sort of where he ranks at on that list. Who's the most selling driver this year? Likely going to be Chase Elliott. Could be Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson is selling a ton of merch these days as well. So let's kind of wait and see how all of that plays out. 
Once again, in back-to-back -back weeks, NASCAR has beat out Formula One in a head-to-head -head ratings battle. Both of them on network television, both of them uh, happening at the same exact time. NASCAR got 2.344 million viewers to tune in for Sunday's all-time classic at Homestead Miami Speedway. Meanwhile, Formula One got 1.4 million viewers over on ABC for the Mexican Grand Prix, which was pretty good at the start and then really leveled off over the second half of that race. Now, once again, NASCAR is the ratings king and they will continue to be that ratings king. I posted on TikTok last week about this and all of these Drive to Survive Formula One fans are in my mentions going, that doesn't even include Formula One TV. The number is going to be way bigger than NASCAR because of Formula One TV. That's just vehemently not true. I mean, there was a study done when uh, Formula One launched F1 TV where they expected uh, at the at its you know most in 2025, 2026 to have around 220,000 uh, subscribers in the United States. So even if you add that in, you're still not getting close to what the NASCAR number uh, was. And that's just how it's going to be. NASCAR has this really devoted built-in base over the age of 60 that carries their rating each and every week. Is Formula One more popular in that 18 to 35, 18 to 49 year old demographic? Yes, yes it is. But when it comes to the older viewers, NASCAR still absolutely dominates that. And it's something that they are vehemently aware of. Like they know they need to sort of shift that uh, demo, that viewing rating to get a younger viewership because ultimately time's going to catch up to uh, where the big portion of their uh, viewer base is. So for now, NASCAR is going to remain king. As much as some people don't want to admit it, as much as people in the Formula One side are like, Formula One's the biggest motorsport in this country. In terms of TV rating, in terms of total TV viewers, it is not. It just isn't at this point. In terms of social interactions, in terms of views on YouTube, yeah, I'll give it to you. Formula One gets a ton of views on YouTube. It gets a ton of interactions on social, mainly because these olds just aren't doing stuff like that. But it's still not going to beat out Formula or NASCAR in the TV rating. This Formula One peaked at 1.6 million viewers. So if you guys would like to take that with solace and be like, oh, we're within 400 or 800,000. All right, great. Sounds good. Phenomenal. But at the end of the day, NASCAR is still a ratings king in the United States. And that's not a shock to anybody. At least it shouldn't be a shock uh, to anyone. I know there's a lot of people out there that only consume Formula One and their friends only consume Formula One. And in their little bubble, Formula One is really important. And don't get me wrong. Formula One is massively important. Just not that much in the United States as of yet in terms of the motorsport landscape. Outside of America, people love to point this out, too, in the uh, comments that Formula One beat out NASCAR in the ratings worldwide. Yeah, that's typical. One of the series races internationally. The other series races domestically in the United States. I would expect the international one to beat it out, but that's just me using a logical portion of my brain uh, to figure figure that one out. Also need to dispel some rumors. Formula One does not get a billion viewers um, a race. That would be an absolutely absurd number, and their marketing deals would be worth way more in terms of sponsorship. They get about 70 to 80 million viewers per race worldwide. Cumulatively, at the end of the season, when you add up how many people watch each race, yeah, that will be over a billion, but that's not really a number that anybody really cares about. Uh, sort of more interested on the by uh, race basis, which is not a billion people at all. Like I said, that would be obscene if it was. So NASCAR continues to beat out Formula One in ratings. Uh, not a bad thing, but there is certainly a shift in the demo that is going to have to happen over the next few years. So let me know in the comments what you think about NASCAR potentially heading to Saudi Arabia, Ryan Priest testing for RFK Racing, Dale Jr. selling a ton of merch, and NASCAR beating out Formula One in the ratings once again. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BreakHardBlog.